people welcome back to the insect nerd where i talk about insects mostly insects because i love insects hence the title um and also i talk about other animals because i keep white tree frogs which are in this tank here um keep diaphrase gigantia which are insects um i've got a new gecko called pharaoh who i will talk about at some point um i will sort of do care and go through care with you at some point as well however i'm just letting him or her um sort of settle in i don't know if it's a him or her yet because it's too young to tell that's why i've called it pharaoh and because of the patterning in it and i will i will talk about um pharaoh a bit more in the few coming weeks um today however we're talking about one of my favorite type of um insects um today is the rainbow stag beetle um so the rainbow stag beetle's scientific name is Phallocranius mulleri and um they are from australia in queensland um they're very colorful they come in many different colors um so this one's a green green shiny one here his name is yeah his name is cosmos um yes i do name my beetles <laughs> um he is yeah he's lovely um i did have some others there is a video on my my first video i did which um wasn't a great video in my opinion because i am sort of fairly new, well i'm very new to youtube um so i'm just sort of learning how to film how to set up um so i i i don't agree with it really and um i these guys are fantastic so um i think this is sort of the video for well for you really that's a bit better but um i, I will probably keep that one on there anyway um but these guys are fairly easy to keep um really stag beetles in general they are um i did so uk stag beetles you can't really breed and sell them we're not you know this is not from the uk obviously but um recently in a few recent years they have been endangered um and you know they're actually protected by law but it's quite interesting because i used to see them a lot around my area my cat used to try and catch them and i used to sort of take them away uh, from the cats oh you okay <laughs> mister uh, yeah, so yeah, this is I Cosmos is absolutely beautiful. He's got the sort of the shiny. Let me have a look. So the males have lovely long mandibles at the front. Um, yeah, for sort of catching food and catching females. I would say they are the more sort of docile stag beetle. I have some tiger stags, um, and I must say they are quite pinchy, even the females. Um, and I will show you them at some point. Um, but yeah, he's gorgeous. Um, and then I'll show you the female as well. So the female is called Astrid. And Astrid is here. Ooh. I don't have enough hands. <laughs> so yeah, she's lovely. They're both lovely. They're both bigger beetles. So the beetles I had before, um, Blossom and Hercules. Um, Hercules, unfortunately, um, didn't survive. He um he was um he just passed away unfortunately sometimes it happens uh sometimes you get beetles at a different age from different breeders and they are the, the the sort of the the peak or the end of their life and sadly they do sort of just pass away um but yeah he was hercules as well was um what we call a minor stag beetle so minor means smaller um sometimes when their beetles develop um and they sort of as larvae if they go into a pupae too quickly too soon they might not fully develop as a as a strong um larvae no sorry i apologize if they go if they go into a pupae too soon they can end up as a really small beetle and that's not a big problem they can have a nice quality of life but it might not always be as long uh, whereas these guys are major beetles, so you can see he's quite huge. Um, if you see the pictures of my beetles online um, on my website, which I will link at the end, then you will see that the difference between Hercules and this one here, um, um, Cosmos, sorry, is a lot. Same with, I'll show you as well, because I've still got Blossom. Um, Astrid and Blossom will look completely different size and i've got violet as well but she's she hides a lot so i won't be able to find her but yeah uh these guys are major because they've uh, they've sort of um developed very well they've developed properly haven't you uh you've 
you've, you've you know you were ready when you went into a pupae you you weren't sort of premature um fortunately it does happen and it's not necessarily anyone's fault um raising beetles especially stags um can be quite hard because they take years um to raise whereas something like um a flower beetle um or sun beetle let's take sun beetle as an example they take a few months really to develop into a beetle and they don't live very long but they are very easy to raise i have some of those as well uh, which i have talked about on here but i might go through again uh, yes so i will just show you what i show show you is there in a little enclosure bear with, oh, bear with me and then i will show you the difference between the size between blossom and astrid uh if i do that first so where are you, Astrid? Oh. So this is their enclosure. Closure. Closure. Um, it does look very messy, and I can't you can't really see it, but um, I'll take a photo and put it on the screen. Um, but generally, it's a breeding enclosure because they are breeding stag beetles. So you need a lot of um. <sighs> sorry. <laughs> you need a lot of flake soil. Um, flake soil is really good for larvae. Um all larvae all beetle larvae um yeah i wouldn't recommend soil as substrate either actually it can be quite upsetting for them um so yeah it's just sort of even if you're just keeping a beetle just use flake soil they don't need a lot um the soil needs to be sort of so you can squeeze it into a ball a small ball but not too damp because otherwise it will make them cold uh, the average temp for them really is between 22 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius. Um, I wouldn't use a heat mat really. Um, just keep them in a nice warm room. Um, don't keep them near a window. It, they are fairly easy to care for um, actually. It's just breeding them that is a bit trickier. Well not breeding them but it's sort of fine. So what you do, I left a uh, little um, <laughs> Astrid here with... Um, Little, little, little Astrid, not so little, but I left um, Astrid with Cosmos for two weeks um, to to sort of have the chance to breed. No, sorry, that's wrong. I left those these two, these two bred, and then you, you wait two weeks, and then they he would have fertilised the eggs. So then you put them in a breeding chamber or a, a, a box, a breeding box, filled with flake soil and what they do is they dig into the log um i can't show you because i don't um i have got, i will I, I will put a picture up on the screen of what the baby larvae look like because i did find one and take a photo um however i don't have any at the moment because i'm waiting for them to lay more but they they go they burrow through the logs oh, and fill in the logs with soil as well as you can see here um this this normally is under the ground um, under the ground this is normally under the log is normally under the soil but i've just taken it out to show you um for feeding you can feed them ripe fruit um they really like banana um i don't like the smell or, um or the taste i mean it's not for me it's for them but i don't generally like the smell of banana so i don't really cut up bananas but i do like the jelly um here is some it's a bit dirty but they won't mind it because they're, they're stag beetles but they they drink the jelly, sort of, they, well, they eat the jelly, but it's sort of liquid. Oh, I've got to give them a new piece now. Uh, but yeah, so they drink the jelly, drink, eat. Uh, in the wild, they would eat, sort of, drink the sap um, and things, or fruit. Um, yeah, so that's sort of their breeding. And when you find, um, make sure you wait a few months before you go into the log, because... Um, they will be really tiny, the larvae, and quite delicate. Um, and also you want them to have the chance to hatch, but don't leave it too long either because these guys can be um, cannibalistic and can eat the larvae sometimes. Um, greedy things. <laughs> so yeah, just be careful. Um, and then you just sort of put them, I'd separate the, um, you can put them in a pot, a big tub together, the larvae, but the larvae themselves can be cannibalistic also. So what I would do is, honestly, I would put them in separate tubs just to make sure, or different sizes in different tubs. So bigger ones in a big, um, sorry, I'm just trying to reach across to get something. 
Um, so I would probably put um, smaller ones in a sort of bigger tub together and bigger ones in a bigger tub together or or separate them. I prefer, To be honest, I wouldn't take the risk. I'd separate them in two containers. It, obviously, you need the room to do that. So bear that in mind before you breed them. You can, Or you can just buy them and, and keep them. You don't have to breed them. Um, just the experience is enough is fantastic. But yeah, um, I just want to show you sort of the difference if I can find her. Where are you, Blossom? There she is. So the difference between these two, she's so small, Blossom, bless her, I've had her for such a long time. So there's Blossom and there's Astrid. Ooh. So the si oh, my finger's in the way. So the size is, is, is incredible. She's huge. She's um Blossom, however, um I got her from somebody who, who just you know, like to be honest, it's so hard to uh to, to raise these guys. Um sometimes it just happens and no matter what you can do what you do, they just end up small like this and it doesn't matter, they've still got the similar quality of life life, but I'd never put Blossom with a big male like Astro um like Cosmos or Devil, who I will show in a minute, because he will crush them <laughs> um, during breeding. But yeah, Violet's about that size as well, so but yeah, she's they, they're both beautiful beetles, just this one's, she's minor and, she, and she's major because she's a lot bigger. So you can see the size difference there. Um, I'm going to show you Devil, if I can find him. And then I'm going to show you the difference between, if Astrid gets off my finger, difference between Cosmos and, oh, let's not put you in there. You know, you can put them in something simple. Um, it doesn't have to be a massive enclosure. As long as it's somewhere they can burrow a little bit. Obviously, when they breed, uh, don't put too much um, flake soil in there because the female will hide and the male won't get a chance to breed with her. Um, which I know it does sound a bit cruel, but if you want to breed them, the female's just going to keep hiding in a lot of soil. Well, flake soil, which is soil, so yeah, I guess. So... That's it. Just a second. I t I've got too many beetles. I can't believe I, I'm even saying this. <laughs> I never say things like that. Oh. Sorry about that. Camera malfunction. So, I will show you. Uh, devil. So, devil was under here. So, it's nice to put hide in there. I like cork. The cork is very nice and it's naturalistic. Um, I don't put anything plastic in there. It's just it's just silly. Um, Violet's drilled holes in there. So I've put them together um, because, to be honest, Violet is a bit bigger than Blossom. Blossom is tiny, so she can handle it. But I will just show you the difference between these two. So this one is Devil and he does look very similar to Cosmos. Now you can't put two males together, so I'm holding them up together, but I'm not putting them in together. So don't worry, but two males together is a bad idea. Why, you ask? Because they will fight over females and they will fight to the death. So please do not put them together. Please, please, please don't. But yeah, Devil's got a slightly red tinge to him. Um, and you can see he's a lot greener. And the difference was quite hard to see on camera, but that's Devil and Cosmos. I would say Devil was much shyer, and yes, they do have personalities. And Cosmos is a lot more friendly. Um, they are very easy to handle. These these stag beetles, um, they rarely pinch. If they do, it's only because your fingers between the their sort of their, their long pincher pincers. Um, and sometimes that might be an accident or, you know, if you're fortunate enough just to put it in there for, for some reason, then, yeah, <laughs> obviously they're going to pinch you. Um, there's one thing also I need to mention is that you can get some pests. You can avoid them by pest tape or if you don't have any pest tape, um, just, just you know, before you get, when you get the flake soil, I would sort of maybe pour bo boiling water in it and leave it to settle a bit just to get rid of any pests that could possibly be in there. 
Um, I've had trouble with it in the past and it's just irritating to be honest. Um, uh, this guy had, um, he had some white mites which are, are totally harmless and actually can be quite normal with stag beetles. However, too many can cause some harm and can get under the electra which are the wing coverings of a beetle. All beetles have wing coverings called electra. Um, and they can sort of get to the genital area and it gets nasty so you know it tears out the, the genitals. I've had that done to um, a beetle in the past, one of my glass dags, um, which was very sad, uh, poor spike. Um, but yes, so just be careful um, and if you do see any you can just literally get a get a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush and brush off the, uh, the pests. Red mites, you want to take those off straight away um you don't even want them in there because they will eat your beetle they will they will bite into them so yes please look out for mites and stuff give give them weekly week, weekly changes checks sorry um oh sorry um for some reason devil hasn't had trouble with it maybe it's the quality of soil or or maybe he he's not as tasty as you cosmos <laughs> Um, but yeah, just be careful, keep an eye on them. Um, I mean, I say this for all animals and insects, just keep an eye on them, just health check them. You know, don't have to get them out all the time. Um, and feeding them, I feed them every few days and spray them. Um, because if you don't spray them every so often, they their spiracles will dry up and they will die. They need some moisture in there, but not too wet either. Um, but I think that's about it really for this, this video. But um, Thank you for watching, and I know it's it's been a long, long time. Um, but yeah, just sort of with as, as, as well. Sorry, before because I'm a chatterbox, and I and I and I, I don't like to stop chatting. With the humidity, just yeah, keep it sort of seventy to eighty percent as well. They like it quite humid, uh, but not not wet and cold. But yeah, that's that's it from me. Sorry. Um, but if you really if you liked this video, and I hope you did. Um, then please like and subscribe um, if you want to um, follow me on Instagram and see what I'm doing see my new pictures of my new um, gecko pharaoh um, see what I'm doing with my frogs then go to uh, then sorry then follow me at the insect nerd 97 and if you want to go to my website and see um, what you know information on stag beetles um, especially the um, rainbow stags that I'm obsessed with them then you know please go to my website www.theinsectnerd.co.uk it is under construction at the moment so some of it looks like it has been changed around don't worry you can still access it and I'm working on making it more accessible on the phone thank you so much and have a pleasant day